Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. No snow, but the local forecasters are tracking something on the radar for Christmas. A look at what to expect for the holidays. If you're getting together with family for the holidays, a nurse has tips on how to celebrate safely with COVID cases surging again. But first, were warning signs ignored? The Oakland County prosecutor releases new evidence in the Oxford school shooting as she makes a case to keep Ethan Crumbly's parents behind bars. The prosecutor says James and Jennifer Crumbly knew their son was depressed, had watched violent videos of shootings and mutilated animals, but still bought him a gun. The new court filing included these disturbing drawings, which we've heard about but haven't seen up till now. Uh, the pictures include drawings of a gun and a bullet. Grant Herms is live in Pontiac tonight at the Oakland County Jail, where the Crumbleys remain locked up. Grant. Jason Pree, as you said, the Crumbleys remained here tonight in the wake of that stunning new filing from prosecutor Karen McDonald. Donald says the Crumbleys ignored the well-being of their son, and she told the court today that they're a risk to run again. James and Jennifer Crumbly a fleeing risk for a second time. So says Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald in a new filing. The Crumbly's trying to get their $500,000 bonds lowered to be released from jail. McDonald saying the couple is having money and marital problems and after a 12 hour manhunt earlier this month, thinks the Crumbly's are at more of a flight risk, saying they will flee if given the opportunity. The Crumbly's attorneys maintain they were always going to turn themselves into police despite being found hiding in an empty warehouse in Detroit. McDonald also laying out her case against the parents in the unprecedented decision to charge them in connection with their son's alleged acts. The prosecutor telling the court they ignored clear signs their son was deeply depressed, including disturbing texts about his state of mind. He was torturing animals and had placed a jar with a baby bird's head in a school bathroom. And then there were these pictures, the ones that alarmed a teacher enough to have the Crumbleys called to the school. The accused shooter drawing bodies with gunshot wounds and blood with phrases like the thoughts won't stop, help me, blood everywhere, and the world is dead. Those images later scratched out, but still visible. McDonald saying the Crumbleys could have prevented the shooting, but willfully ignored warning signs, saying instead of paying attention to their son and getting him help, they bought him a gun. And McDonald told the court that she thinks these charges against the Crumbleys are appropriate and she thinks there's a high probability for conviction here. The Crumbleys are asking that their bonds be lowered to $100,000. They've also volunteered to wear tracking anklet monitors. They'll be back in court, Jason, on January 7th. Back to you. Grandy, any insight into what this could all mean for the lawsuits that have been filed against the school district? Uh, that remains to be seen, but there are certainly new evidence here that we haven't seen before, including those warning signs, the mutilated bird, the messages, the journals, and those drawings that it landed the Crumbleys and this accused shooter in the principal's office. Now, those cut against what the district has said in the past, that they didn't have any warning signs or any previous altercations with this accused shooter. So we'll see what happens as those cases go forward now that this has been filed. Yeah. Back to you. A long way to go in this whole legal process mm -hmm. for sure. We'll be watching it. Grant, thanks. We're also getting a chance to hear a 911 call alerting police to the whereabouts of James and Jennifer Crumbly after they failed to turn themselves in on the manslaughter charges. Yeah, a man called late on the night of December 3rd and said he saw the Crumbleys in Detroit when he went to repark his car at his office. The parents of the shooter that are running away, they're here. And there was a Kia that looked like their car. And I walked around and checked um, the license plate. And it's their car, and the, the woman is here next, next to the car. Where are the units in that area? Thank you. Okay, yeah, they're, yeah they're, I can't believe it. They're here. You can listen to the 911 call and view the new evidence submitted by the prosecutor today. It's all at clickondetroit.com. And, of course, being December 23rd, uh, always top of mind is what the weather is going to be like over the next few days. Yeah, absolutely, Paul, but no white Christmas this year, huh? No, and December 23rd, of course, is Festivus, and so we've had a lot of fun with that one today. But Happy Festivus, with, Paul. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I haven't heard you air your grievances yet. But uh, it's, sure coming, it's coming, yeah, it's the coming. It's coming. commercial break. All right, nothing going on right now in Storm Track 4, but look what happened late this afternoon. Things were clearing out, then all of a sudden this 
like this area of crud just developed right over us. We actually had some freezing drizzle in spots, uh, some snow to the north, some rain to the south, but that's all gone and now we're dry for the rest of the night and we have a warm front coming through the area right now. Look at this. You can see 41 at City Airport, 40 at Metro, 42 at Gross Hill, 41 Monroe, and then north of that warm front, it's not just 30s, but low 30s. Look at this, a 10 degree difference between Sandusky and Gross Hill. So tomorrow when we wake up, it's going to be dry and it'll be dry through early afternoon and look at these temps into the 40s tomorrow. Just scattered light rain showers. We'll talk more about the Christmas forecast and the rest of the weekend coming up in just a few. But don't forget, the local forecasters app has everything you need. Real-time radar, future cast, which takes that radar and just projects it hours into the future so you see where stuff's going. It's fast, easy, accurate, and it's free. Just go to the App Store, search under WDIV. All right, thank you, Paul. COVID cases continue to surge as we head into the holidays, and federal officials are making a change to help understaffed hospitals. If they test positive for the virus, healthcare workers will be allowed to return to work after just seven days. Now, the previous rule called for a 10 day isolation period. Also today, the FDA authorized a second pill to treat COVID. Merck's treatment has been okayed for adults with mild to moderate COVID who are at risk of severe disease. Yesterday, a Pfizer pill was authorized for people as young as 12. Also, along with Oakland University now, Wayne State is starting the next semester off remotely. The university is moving classes online until at least January 31st. Tonight, United Airlines canceled more than 100 Christmas Eve flights because of COVID. And if you're traveling or getting together with family tomorrow, there are things you can do to create a safer celebration. Larry Sproul spoke to a nurse tonight to get some tips heading into the holidays, and he's live at Metro Airport tonight. Good evening, Larry. Good evening, Priya and Jason. Hundreds and thousands of people are expected to walk through the doors here at Metro Airport as they head to their holiday destination. But meanwhile, health officials are urging and encouraging people to be safe during the travel period and once they get to their destinations. So here in Michigan and also across the country, Omicron is the dominant variant. Um, which was predicted, you know, by health officials. Dr. Asha Shahjahan with Beaumont Health says hospitals are seeing more and more COVID cases. So what we know about Omicron is that it does seem to be more infectious. And so that means uh, you are more likely to to get it if you're in a crowded gathering. Dr. Shah Jahan says that's why they're encouraging everyone to be cautious and safe, especially during the holiday season as we gather indoors to be with our families. I would uh, really recommend that if you're going to be in an indoor gathering of people to know whether they're vaccinated or not. If it's a fully vaccinated group, uh, you probably will be in, in better shape. Uh, if you don't know whether the people who are going to be at your gathering are vaccinated, then I would highly recommend wearing a mask. And she says those same safety rules apply when traveling as well as hundreds of thousands of people will hit the roads or fly this Christmas. If you are traveling in an airport, I highly recommend wearing a mask. Um, and the thing is, is that you don't want to wear just a cloth mask, a cloth mask doesn't offer enough protection. The reason we wear masks is that we don't want to breathe in these aerosol particles of the virus. The, the best mask is actually the N95 mask. And the 95 means that it filters through about 95% of the particles. So there's the N95, the KN95, those are the highest level of protection. And also they are urging people to get vaccinated and to wash their hands, but they're asking and, and remembering they're saying that because of the high amount of travel this holiday season, they are anticipating another possible surge or increase of COVID numbers. We're live at Metro Airport tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Certainly good advice there. Thank you, Larry. A Monroe County man is charged with murdering his grandmother and violently beating his grandfather. Investigators say Jeffrey Ott got into a fight with his grandparents at their home in Bedford Township Friday. They say he was told to leave, but forced his way back into the home, then assaulted his grandfather and grandmother. His 72-year-old grandmother died from her injuries. His grandfather has been released from the hospital. Ott is facing murder, assault, and home invasion charges. Here on Township, police need your help finding 22-year-old Jalen Juwan Kendall. He's wanted in connection to a shooting today in Huron Township on Will Carlton and I-275. A 22-year-old was shot but is expected to be okay. Police say they arrested someone at the scene who might have also been involved in the shooting. If you know anything about Jawan Kendall's whereabouts, please call police.
A judge has ruled a Romeo man charged in the January 6th insurrection will have to stay in jail until his trial. U.S. attorneys say there is video of Tim Bowner using pepper spray on Capitol Police officers during the riot at the U.S. Capitol. Bowner is facing nine charges, including assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon. He's being held without bond and is due back in court in five days. Well, New Year's Eve will look different in Times Square. Boy, it sure is going to. The new precautions you'll notice if you're watching the ball drop at home. That's coming up. Plus, Jesus, take the wheel. I just put it in God's loving hands and, and, and count it as a special Christmas miracle this year that I'm going to be with my husband and my family. Debris crashes through a woman's windshield on the freeway, missing her by just inches where she thinks this pipe came from. But first, the family of Dante Wright reacts to the guilty verdict for former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. 